I'm sure. So you said that, and it just makes me think. Um, I think it's great that the stops don't happen the way they used to because it was all kind of not just legal but other issues. But I think the Irish citizen might think that it's more guns on the street now. So just the sheer number dropping that drastically, I guess. So the majority of um, guns that previous years were gotten were gotten from those very searches that were brought up in the ACLU lawsuit? I, you know, uh, what brought the ACLU lawsuit together, that was not us. I could tell you that the style of uh, policing by bringing all, you know, mandatory stops over in like the Center Street corridor and things like that, I was not in agreement with that. That was the crux of the ACLU lawsuit. Um, Is that where the guns were coming from, though? Is that where the bulk, you get what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't have that answer for you in that, but I can tell you how you can come up with those numbers. For example, you can go in a, in a DOE, a dead on entry, a World War II veteran who may have two uh, gun cases full of guns. That could be a number that we're using, but did it really matter? that you recovered a World War II veteran's uh, 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 safes with 50 guns. It, that wasn't the crime. The, they, those weren't crime guns, but it can come up by your numbers. Mm -hmm. I'm talking the numbers that we're doing coming up from pursuits, uh, drug investigations, um, uh, shooting investigations, robbery investigations, and even if you talk about pursuits, we're not, we don't just chase somebody, we chase somebody, and when we chase that person, what was, it, what is their involvement? Are they a robber? Are they a mobile drug dealer? Are they uh, an OWI? And if they're you know, the first two, uh, we're going to do more research on these people. We're going to follow up on them, probably follow up with a search warrant on their house, recover more guns, recover more drugs, have a stronger case to the prosecution to say this is the person that is part, a part of the problem, not just, you know, you know, one gun recovered. That may require more. That may have come up with more guns, but a stronger case on that individual. Uh, again, focusing on the problem and instead of... Uh, and like I said, I don't know how the other guns, I could tell you one district, uh, District 5, uh, your aldermanic district, uh, uh, that uh, the prior, before, you know, we took over, that district was the highest in gun recoveries. Currently, they're the lowest in gun recoveries, but they're the highest in homicides. They're the lowest, biggest drop in homicide reduction. But, Chief, um, to the, uh, Alderman Murphy? To the uh, chairperson's concerns, though, in 2018, guns recovered were 2,911. Evidence guns were 2,490. Google is connected there. So I, I know we're talking about reckless driving initiatives, but it just brought to mind a point Alderman Murphy brought up yesterday with the municipal courts, and I think it's that the tickets mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. um, is it speeding? Yeah. are down. Yeah. So just wonder what that's about. It's part of the uh, ACLU lawsuit. We're doing. We're not doing the uh, flooded over policing area where we're uh, measured on our activity on traffic and subject stops that resulted in citations. We are uh, doing more focused uh, things so that the um, RDRI, the Reckless Driving Initiative, we're actually in these, uh, you know, traffic or these thoroughfares that are having a lot of uh, um, traffic issues and actually pulling the person over that actually is speeding or doing something reckless that uh, they're getting pulled over for. So that those are the people that are getting the tickets. We're not just, uh, again, that whole Center Street corridor where we're stopping a, uh, a minivan because a minivan, uh, a Dodge Car minivan because it's uh, high steel and we're stopping every Dodge Caravan and giving a ticket because it's activity driven and, and things of that nature. Those are all things that came across in the agreement with the ACLU lawsuit. I guess. Lewis and I serve in a, a task force to try to address this issue. And I'm really concerned is that we saw a precipitous drop. And I, and I so what I hear from you is the ACL lawsuit, and I understand that lawsuit. I worked with Judge Lynn Edelman on that. Mm -hmm. um, but it is having a, an, an impact because um, 
you know, whether it's Capitol Drive, Center Street, North Avenue, Burleigh, I get continuous complaints from people. See, Man. people are just out of control speeding. So when I go to neighbor meetings, they say, in, you know, Alderman Bauman tried to raise, I mean, uh, <coughs> tried to raise some private, private money to increase your overtime mm -hmm. for more ticketing, but we see a big re reduction. I, I hear what you're saying. It's based on the ACLU saying that you just can't over um, enforce certain neighborhoods. But as a result of that, indirectly, you see more crazy people driving. And, and I guess it, I, I'm kind of curious legally how you're able to differentiate where somebody's doing. I suppose you can if somebody's driving 20 miles over versus 10 miles and over. What is a higher priority? So I, I kind of get that. But I. I I mean, the un, I'm sure the ASL didn't want to have the unintended consequences of more reckless driving in the city of Milwaukee, but that may be the end result of the price you pay of not having over-policed in certain neighborhoods, They're, and that's the balance they think is probably acceptable in their minds. I'm not sure that's what I would hear from the general population in my district, mm -hmm. but it is the legal issues that we're facing. Just and so I, I would ask to do whatever you can because it's, you know, and of course, with 60 fewer positions, you're going to have less ability to do that even more so. Just, just, to, just to add on the complicated, uh, when we're looking at the number, and the number can be deceiving, saying we're not doing anything about it, well, we're showing we're doing a lot of things about it. But just going back into there, you may not see the sheriffs. Uh, this just give an example, uh, Capitol Drive. You got I-43 and you got I-94. You got Tulsa and you got Milwaukee, and you probably have Glendale in there. We network as the districts with different jurisdictions that are going to take different areas, and sometimes it's that boundary area because that car that was driving recklessly went through a number of different jurisdictions. South 27th Street, you have Franklin, you have Oak Creek, you have Milwaukee, and then you have uh, 894 that passes by there. So the sheriff's is involved, but sometimes they're taking that uh, the highway that's connected. Right. Uh, so you will see it on 45 because I see it on my way home. Yeah. They're doing some aggressive st uh, traffic stops around Silver Spring, around Capitol, uh, more so Silver Spring and Hampton, but on 45. So they're taking the area that's close to the problem. Uh, the State Patrol, same thing. And then you have Green, like I said, I named the different jurisdictions. Right. So something is happening with that particular driver that's going through multiple jurisdictions driving, and you're not going to see it in numbers per se. And that's that one thing. And another thing that we're doing is, you know, the, 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 the amount of the type of reckless driving, it goes in two, th two different spots. Because I always say uh, the news will report the, uh, the uh, police pursued a vehicle for reckless driving. There's a, dif a differentiation from the reckless driving where people are just rock reckless, dri reckless driving because maybe we weren't, as a law enforcement uh, a group, really enforcing that type because we're in one area of the city. And then there's the reckless driving that came as a result from the carjacking, the mobile right. drug market, and uh, the, yep. the robberies. Those people are being arrested. They're not being given a ticket. Right. So we're arresting these people, and uh, we're bringing them in for pro prosecution for criminal charges. Okay, I guess if you could maybe just get me a copy of what the sheriffs have, because it would then show a significant increase in the sheriffs issuing tickets, and that would maybe alleviate. And I know the suburban communities are um, stepping up their enforcement, because I see them racing into my district from Wauwatosa. Right. Um, so, but I, I think everyone agrees that one of the pressing problems facing the city is the um, increase in traffic accidents, the disregard for public safety, and the endangerment of the general welfare of the public by people who, who, who've demonstrated they don't have any concern for anybody else's safety. So it is a high priority, and so I guess we'll be looking at, you know, what, once the task force recommendations come out, there's going to probably be at least 50, 60 recommendations, um, my guess. And so um, we'll have to figure out how we can try to reduce the behavior, what we're seeing in our city. Do you have, in previous years, what percentage of the speeding tickets stemmed from the type of operation that is um, you're prevented from doing as a result of the ACLU of settlement? The, the Do you understand what I'm saying? The data? Yeah. So, like, 
the chief just said, you just said that you believe in part the numbers are down because of the ACL lawsuit and what you're you're not doing, those coordinated stops in certain key um, areas that were targeted. In my mind, and after sitting for years at FPC meetings and hearing residents complain, um, I would not have thought that the tickets that resulted mostly from those stops were speeding related. But based on what you just said, it leads me to believe that I may not be thinking correctly. So I'm wondering if you have data that shows <clears throat> that the bulk of the past years, or whatever percentage the past years, speeding tickets resulted out of those targeted enforcement areas. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I guess where I'm going is, when I saw the reduction in municipal court, it makes me feel like you guys are, are writing less speeding tickets. I wouldn't have thought to attribute that to the ACLU lawsuit, because I would have thought that those targeted things that you can't do anymore as a part of the ACLU settlement resulted in a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. What people felt were illegal searches and other, you know, other tickets for drugs and whatever, whatever else, not speeding necessarily. Because to stop them, did they have a busted tail light? Did they um, not stop properly? Did they, like, it wouldn't necessarily be speeding, I would think. So do you have data mm. that shows that those previous um, years of the tickets were resulting from those targeted enforcement areas or whatever percentage of it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, just to give the uh, the conversation some context, because I think I think we're um, I think there's some issues that have been confused. The lawsuit itself, the, I should say, the settlement itself, doesn't preclude us from engaging in any legitimate strategy. It doesn't preclude us from doing anything. Um, what the issue at hand was that there was an overall policing strategy of stopping people. It was used as a strategy uh, when, in fact, uh, stopping a person when you don't have probable cause to arrest them should be a tool, not a strategy. What that did was it resulted in an almost exponential increase in, in subject stops and traffic stops. Traffic stops for any number of reasons. Mm -hmm. When we de-emphasized stops, um, as a, a natural result of that was that the numbers fell off the face of the earth, and that's going to be where that's going to be where the missing revenue is. We don't do as many stops. Um, I, I, I look at the data all the time, and you have to I have to apologize because I don't have the numbers. But if you look at them on a line graph, they go up, 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 up and sharply drop. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, at one point we did 47 to 50,000 field interviews in one year. We're on pace to do less than 7,000 this year. And traffic stops follow that same pace. So that's where, that's where it is. That's where the tickets are. Um, where, where before it was a citywide, tra it, the, the, the thought was those Christmas tree lights will reduce crime. So the, that's where the volume of stops came from. It was not very targeted. What we do now is targeted. And by the, by the, de by the de definition of targeting, you are in a specific area and you're limiting the use of that strategy. But I guess to the, the chairperson's point, um, it's if we could just look at apples to apples and see how many in the last three years were just just traffic speeding mm -hmm. citations, and then look at it um, this last year. Mm -hmm. Just you should be able to break that out. Yeah, we, yeah. we can. We, we, we have the data. It's not easy, um, but the information is there, and I, our prediction is going to be. As the stops decline, you're going to see the stops decline by similar percentages in all violation categories. Yeah, and uh, then, absolutely. And then there's a, there, we've had a change of the way we approach these. Before, when we were making <coughs> all of those traffic stops, it wouldn't be uncommon to stop someone and let's say they get a speeding ticket, a seatbelt ticket, broken tail light, what is considered piling on. That's not permissible anymore. Back when that was occurring, supervisors did not have the ability to read, to um, go through citations and approval. So if an officer wrote a citation, there was only one person <coughs> that was over tracked. So an officer could write five citations to one person. 
That's not the case anymore. Every supervisor has the ability to review all of these citations, and we continuously push the most egregious offenses are the ones that should be cited. So that's also a reason why there's a drop in not only just speeding, but in all the other categories. Absolutely, and I can tell you that in 2013, the Milwaukee Police Department from January 1st to September 30th, we conducted 135,950 traffic stops. This year, we conducted 44,046 traffic stops. Big it's drop. a huge drop. In 2017, we conducted 94,295 stops during that same time period. And again, uh, 2018, we conducted 66,599 traffic stops during that same time period. So the drop continues in terms of stops and the subject stops, uh, those are even more. Those how does that, that relate to the greater? Yeah, how does that relate to the crashes and the reckless driving, though? I mean, well, we is we it are working or is it we same? are pursuing we are pursuing people and we are taking people into custody. So some of the same people who are driving reckless are that's our focus. The people In who are driving areas. exactly, and we're pursuing those folks. So our pursuits are way up, and forty seven percent of the people that we pursue, uh, we apprehend. Gotcha. So there's no ticket there. Alderman, I can tell you on the pursuits, we've actually, um, our total pursuits decreased by 5% from 18 to 19. However, our arrests have increased by 22% between the two years. And that's the correlation of the direct targeting direct tar Yeah, exactly. Right. Direct targeting, pursuing, and arresting. We're in the right time at the right place. Right. It's, where on center is the target? <laughs> You, you can't say you need that for you need that for your uh, undercover. We, we, we could give you all the data. Okay. You need, in terms yeah, of I got you. Okay. <laughs> you need that for all right. Keep that. I might still avoid that error when you try. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> nice try. <laughs> well, you know, center is hot. I just you know. Thank you. Is it possible to get crash data and police t um, chase data, but?